I wanted to ask, so there was, you have, it's part of your book where you kind of do an assessment of your, your relationships and it's like a, an audit of sorts. And I ask this because I feel like the more work I do, the more difficult it is to maintain certain friendships and relationships. It's just, it takes so much more effort. My perspective is so different that it's hard to connect or it's hard to relate. And especially if it comes to something like scarcity, people that have like real um, finite perspective on resources and energy and money. And I just, it, nothing irks me more. I'm like, you're choosing that. And I don't know why you're so committed to live in a, in a space of scarcity mm-hmm. when you know, the universe is so abundant. So how can I audit my relationships to see where I'm at? Yeah. So I created this list and whether you do it with yourself individually, it's basically a life review of before you die and you're forced to take a life review because you still have a chance to correct maybe things that aren't working. So whether it's with yourself or with someone else, and it could be somebody on their deathbed. It could be you're, you're in a friendship. And, you know, a lot of times we outgrow our friendships, our, our love romantic relationships, because one of us is doing the work to grow and evolve and the other one's not. And Mm -hmm. so the one who's not, it's not their fault. It's that we are changing. They are not. And that's Mm -hmm. where you, you don't want to shrink down to fit in and match them. You want to rise up and shine. And you want to do so with the intention to be the light, be the example for those around you. And either your friends, your partners will be inspired by that and start to do the work and rise up and match you, or they won't. And what happens then is the universe decides it for you. They fall out of your life. You have an organic breakup of some sort, Mm -hmm. okay, or a death perhaps. And it can be really scary and uncomfortable. But what you have to remember is that the law of attraction, okay, you will find your people and the universe will bring those right new relationships to you that match the frequency you're in. Mm -hmm. And so it can be uncomfortable to the ego. It's like an ego death of releasing the people, the situations. But if your consciousness, for example, is in abundance consciousness and you have family members or friends who are still in scarcity consciousness, Mm -hmm. you're going to be on two different wavelengths. You're just not going to match up. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay. Like give it to God, give it to your guides, send them love and then let it be. Don't try and force the friendship. It's like trying to put on an old pair of jeans that are too tight and you've outgrown. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Go buy a bigger size of jeans if that's what you need. You know, like allow yourself to expand and grow and fly to soar this higher frequency because that's what we're here to do. Do you have like a technique or a meditation or just a path for people to be able to pull a root out of something that is like an embedded narrative that we have? And scarcity is a great example because I think a lot of people can relate to that. Just I still struggle with it sometimes. It's something I have to actively choose not to fall into, which is why Mm -hmm. I get so triggered when I'm around people like that because I it's very easy for me to automatically go back into those negative thoughts because that was my programming growing up. So I do a lot of work to try to remain open and abundant and like think that there's enough pie for everybody instead of like, they're taking my likes, like shut up, like to my little head, like the little voice in my head, like shut up. So how, and I have meditated, I've done work, I've done psychedelics and there's still this lingering scarcity. So how the F do I take the root out? Yeah. You know, I think intention is number one because energy Mm -hmm. follows intention, right? Mm -hmm. And so I did create a program in this book. I call it Change It, Run It, Tap It. And Change It is, it's all about flipping the false belief. So from the negative to the affirmative. Okay. So from the false beliefs that either you created from illusion, delusion, or that you adopted from your ancestors to your soul truth. Okay, that knowing that you are abundant. So you have to then, it's almost like affirmations. So Mm -hmm. you could take like, I am, let's say worthiness is your issue. Okay, so I am unworthy. I'm not enough to I am so worthy and deserving. I am more than enough. I am enough for just being born. And so you have to then start canceling the negative, every time you see it coming back into whether it's conscious or unconscious, cancel, cancel, 
and flip it and affirm whether you say it out loud, you write it down, okay? But affirmations alone, I don't think work. So you have to be able to integrate that. And so what I've been doing for years with my energy healer is we run energy and that's using the frequency of colors, okay? Every color vibrates at a different frequency. And so, you know, violet light is transmutive. It, it changes negative energy to positive or gold light is about divine truth and all love. And so you can, with your affirmations, combined with visualizing, meditating on certain colors and running it through your system. And so change it, run it. And the third part is tap it, emotional freedom technique. Okay, so you're using the, the art of tapping to hit those acupressure points in your body to integrate the new beliefs. So you're releasing emotional toxins, okay? And those false beliefs as you run through the tapping. So you can do one of those things. You can do all of those things. And this book actually has a QR code for free meditations and um, videos on this exact stuff. So if anyone's Amazing. like, I don't know where to start, five minutes a day, okay? Mm -hmm. And check this out. And I walk you through it. And it's that simple. You're mm -hmm. changing your energy. You're changing your vibration, okay? And that right there is going to, over time, repetition. Do it for 30 days, 60 days to reprogram, reset. You will have pulled out that root, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's really, that's what I'm talking about. It is work, but it's easy. It's five minutes a day. And mm -hmm. it sets the tone for the rest of your day. So it is worth it. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds – I love that there's something to, actionable to do because, again, it's something that I've been really working on personally and I know probably a lot of other people can resonate with. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, and it works, I'm telling you. Like, Because even I, I'm, I'm not immune to any of this. I have my own baggage, my own homework. <laughs> <laughs> and I do it. And then sometimes they're like, oh, my gosh, why haven't I been tapping? Why haven't I been doing my, my own program? And then I go do it. And I'm like, wow, I feel really different. So mm – -hmm. but again – what I always like to remind people, take what works, leave the rest. Mm -hmm. Something I said may have really resonated and something else not so much, then that's your guidance. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because you want to find what resonates because that means that's what you need right now and that will work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. When it comes to like intergenerational trauma or even past life karma for people that believe in that. How much of it is necessary to try to figure out? Because I have this theory that we forget for a reason. Like, I don't think that that's a mistake. I think some people are able to maybe tap into it much easy, like much easier or um, they, they say that they remember all of their past lives and it's not even taking energy. It's just there. It's just like a memory. But then you have people that are focused so hard on um, – like recovering past lives and trying to figure out whatever their karmic debt is. And I almost feel like it's a, a way to avoid what's currently happening in this life and like this, mm -hmm. in this carnation. So like how necessary is it or at all to go back and look at past life trauma or karma, or are we supposed to kind of be focused on the here and now? You know, I think it it's useful when it's relevant to your current day situation. And so when I do readings, I'll ask spirit, show me what this person is ready to hear, needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And it the only information that ever comes through is exactly what you're ready for. And sometimes we do talk about past life stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't. It depends on, okay, we've lived hundreds, if not tens of thousands of past lives. So you, when you do, you dip into past life regression, whether you do it with a professional or you do it on your own, you will be taken to the life that's relevant to the homework or the lesson you're working on now in this life. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, it's good. It's going to knowledge is power. Okay. And if you can have your aha moment, like, oh my gosh, the reason I have eating disorders is because I starved to death in my last life that's going to bring you this new awareness and compassion for yourself and healing can happen because you can connect the dots on some of the, you know, unconscious patterns and behaviors that we find ourselves in. I think it's really good when it comes to intergenerational things that have been passed down to you. When you are able to get information, okay, about 
let's say, a family pattern. Let's say there's a, his, a line of alcoholics in your family and you are waking up and in recovery, okay? And you need information on, I, I sit down with you and we do a reading and your great grandfather comes through apologizing for starting this pattern of numbing and checking out and dis, this dysfunctional pa- family pattern passed down to your father and now to you. There's healing in that. Okay. And then you have an opportunity to break the chain of dysfunction and you can heal generations forwards and backwards Mm -hmm. by having the courage to get the information you need to make peace with yourself and to move forward, break that pattern. So again, a lot of times it's healthy. Now to your point, a lot of times we get obsessed and that's the human part, the ego where we just can't shake it. We get kind Mm -hmm. of brought down into a downward spiral where we get almost paralyzed by it. Mm -hmm. That's very disempowering. Mm -hmm. And that's where you need to focus forward because whatever you focus on expands. So if you're focused on the past and stuck in the past and reliving it, you go into victim, Mm -hmm. there's no way you can evolve past that. So sometimes you just have to acknowledge it, not spiritually bypass it, You've done mm-hmm. your work, you've looked at it, and then you let it go. Give it to God, ask to cut the cords. Sometimes there's shamanic, you know, healings you can do to really, and that's why I think a lot of people do ayahuasca to journey mm-hmm. into it and to heal it and release it. Mm-hmm. And then focus forward and decide what you want to move into and put your energy towards co-creating what's next. <laughs> 